this has got to be literally the perfect example of not burning your bridges. Team Keep It Clean, Sting Raven here with another video. Uh, and it's been announced by the Ravens that they have signed or re-signed uh, safety Tony Jefferson. So this is his third stint with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, I'm sure he's happy. You know, they're happy. He's somebody that's well-respected uh, by the Ravens front office and also well-respected uh, by that Ravens team uh, in the locker room. Uh, this move, um, it's a move that I saw coming. Uh, I talked about it. If, I don't know if y'all remember toward the end of last season after they signed Tony Jefferson and especially in that Bengals game. In that Bengals game, that's when I just felt like I just knew that they were bringing him back. And the play, it's a familiar play that I'm, I'm sure y'all remember, and we talked about it before, to where the game was already over. Bur Burrow had already thrown for over 500 yards, and for him to do that, and you be a defensive player, for a quarterback to throw for over 500 yards on you, you got to, it got to make you feel some type of way. Um, but the game was over, the score was out of reach, it was a wrap, and Burrow was still throwing. And he threw a pass to Tyler Boyd in the end zone, and Tony Jefferson was covering Tyler Boyd. And it looked like Burrow had just thrown for another touchdown. Uh, but Tony Jefferson got up and he said, no, 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 it was incomplete. And I'm thinking, uh, Tony Jefferson, I, I know you want it to be incomplete, but Tyler Boyd, he just snagged it on you. So it's all good. The game was already over, but it ain't incomplete. But nope, Tony Jefferson knew what he was talking about and shut me up quick because that was no touchdown. It was incomplete and it got ruled incomplete. But my point in bringing up that play was that it showed Tony Jefferson, it showed his effort and his heart because we've seen a lot of times when teams are being blown out when the game is over and guys are just kind of lollygagging, guys just kind of, oh, okay, whatever, all right, let's just get this over with. We, we know we lost, uh, so let's just, let's just finish the game, okay. And you can understand why people feel like that because if you're losing and there's literally nothing that you can do to come back, then you can check out. We've all checked out of bad situations before. Um, but for Tony Jefferson to not check out and to still be giving it his all, that showed a lot. And I'm sure Tony Jefferson, he knows the business of the NFL. and He knows how it stands for not for long. And him uh, having beat the system of the NFL, him having been an undrafted free agent, undrafted rookie free agent, and him making it this far into his career, that says a lot about him and that says a lot about his effort. But back to the business side, he knew that, all right, I'm the Ravens, they signed me to their practice squad and then, okay, they called me up to the active roster. Now, this season is looking, it's looking shaky, but I got to make sure that I give my all and I show myself because this is my audition tape. This is my audition tape for 32 teams in the league because he was, only, he was not signed beyond this year. He was not signed beyond last season when he came on board. So he knew whatever he showed out there, good or bad, teams were going to see. And he's only, I think he's only like 30. It seems like Tony Jefferson is a lot older because it seems like he's been playing in the league a lot longer, like for a really long time. It seems like Tony Jefferson is one of those dudes that just have been around for a minute. Like he's like, like how Sammy Watkins, how a lot of us, especially myself, I thought Sammy Watkins was a lot older, but he's only like, I think he's 28. I think he's going to be 29 this offseason. Like, man, like, really? Like these, these dudes, they done been around. Uh, but again, Sammy Watkins, the opposite of him, he's the opposite of Tony Jefferson because he was a first round draft pick. And again, Tony Jefferson was undrafted. So, like I said earlier, that speaks a lot to his work ethic, the fact that he is still around. And that work ethic and the hard work is certainly paid off because the Ravens are bringing him back. Now, um, with the Ravens uh, returning or Tony Jefferson returning to the Ravens, my biggest question what is his role going to be on the team? How are the Ravens going to use him? Uh, the deal, I'm sure the deal will probably be like a one, two-year deal at the most. It's not going to be for much. Uh, it's not going to be a crazy salary or anything like that. It's not going to have crazy implications on the salary cap. I'm sure it'll be a team-friendly deal. Um, but what is his role going to be? 
And with the timing of this and with somebody who they just lost, well, lost because he's still on the team. He's just not a player anymore. Anthony Levine. Anthony Levine was somebody who the Ravens, they put him in so many different places on the defense throughout his tenure with the Ravens. So with Tony Jefferson this year, I would expect him to sort of take on that role. You can put him at linebacker. You can obviously put him at safety. You could do different things with him. But my biggest hope for the Baltimore Ravens this season with Tony Jefferson is that you play him to his strengths. Play him to his strengths. That's all I ask. Play him to his strengths. There's going to be a lot on Mike McDonald. Well, really, everything is on Mike McDonald. You are the defensive coordinator, so he's got to play him to his strengths. And if he can do that, then you'll be able to get the most out of however long the Tony Jefferson's contract is with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so I would expect him to be on special teams, do a lot of special teams. You know, he don't mind playing special teams. I mean, he would always be looking for an opportunity to whack somebody. Uh, but then, of course, I, I would expect him to also uh, be on defense as well uh, for a good amount of time. Uh, and then, again, just be used as sort of a Swiss army knife. Uh, put him over here, put him over there, and do that. So he is somebody, what, what works in your favor is that he's somebody that has a lot of experience. Uh, he's played in different systems. He's had to learn different playbooks. Uh, he is a veteran in the game. He's a veteran because, again, he's been around for a minute. He's been around for a while. Uh, so he knows the NFL. So if you're going to be uh, installing a new playbook, all right, cool. Even though they did say that they is on defense, but they did say that they're going to do a lot of stuff the same like Wink did. Uh, and they're going to do some stuff differently, too. So him being familiar with Wink system, uh, that is a plus. But him also having been around the NFL shows that he's been able to pick up different playbooks because had he not been able to pick up different playbooks, he would not still be around in the league. <laughs> he certainly would. Uh, so he, he's also going to be somebody that can help the young guys, too. Um, and again, you know, uh, Tony Jefferson, he is somebody that always had a good vibe with the Ravens. And it, it was crazy how he just even on his again. To, see, Tony Jefferson, when Tony Jefferson is going out, he goes out with a bang, even if the game is not going in his favor. And that's so crazy, man, because I remember his first tenor with the Ravens. On the, the when they were going against the Steelers, and when he tore his ACL, I think I forgot how the play ended. If it was either an incompletion, or he uh, he did like a defensive holding or pass interference, just so the play would not be a completion. But I remember on the play that he tore his ACL or Achilles, whichever it was, he was dragging down I think the tight end. Oh who, yeah, he was dragging down a tight end or receiver, whoever it was. He was dragging down a pass catcher so that pass catcher would not make the play. And his season was his season was over because his leg was done. But he still gave that effort and still made the play. Is Tony Jefferson the fastest safety out there? No. Is he the strongest? Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he probably is now. So, yeah, yeah but, but anyway, my point is that with Tony Jefferson, uh, he may not have all the best attributes in the world of some different safeties around the league, but the effort is there and you can't teach effort, but effort is something that can be very, very contagious, especially if you are well-respected in the locker room. If you're showing effort and you're a respected player, players are going to look at you like, oh, man, he's showing that? Oh, I, I, I got to step up. I, I got to be better. I, I got to do better. So let's see how this thing goes. Let's see how it goes. Um, I'm excited about this Ravens offseason. Uh, this is one of their own that they re-sign, and we'll see if they re-sign any of their other own, uh, but they also could do some opposites, too. And they will do some opposites of re-signing by releasing uh, some players, so be on the lookout for that. Free agency starts um, in about three weeks and change, uh, so, you know, Ravens, they're going to be making their own moves to try to get a little bit of wiggle room as far as the cap and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this is this offseason, just like so many others, uh, is going to be crazy. But 
Ravens, for so many reasons, um, they got to get this offseason right. They have to. They got to knock it out the park when it comes to free agency, when it comes to the draft, when it comes to just how they build this roster. They got to knock it out the park because the Ravens, they are a team that is in win now mode. They've been in win now mode for a very long time. And they did a good job last year building the roster. But unfortunately, everybody got hurt this year. Got to do an even better job. Got to do an even better job. So let's see how it goes. Anyway, congrats to Tony Jefferson. Shout out to him. Welcome back again for the time number three. Uh, and hopefully the third time is the Charm City. We out.